uh, let me start by saying that uh, about last week's visit by Modi to Europe, he first visited Germany, then to Denmark, then finally to France. Now, I think that this is a very significant uh, visit because the it was very in-depth. There were agreements signed across various fields, and it really uh, deepened the partnership between India and these European countries and Europe in general because Modi also spoke to uh, Nordic countries, all the Nordic countries, in a meeting. So, yeah, I think this is a very significant meeting and want to look at the agreement side rather than look at the politics that people have been talking about. So, these are the government-to-government -government agreements in, signed by India and Denmark. The Declaration of Intent on Migration and Mobility. This is to increase the ease for people to migrate from Denmark and India and in between each countries and also to limit and prevent illegal immigration from either countries. And the Letter of Intent between Ministry of Poor, Shipping and Waterways and Government of India the Ministry of Business, Industry, and Financial Affairs of Denmark on Center of Excellence in Green Shipping. This is really good. This will help make it easier for both countries' ships to land on each other's ports and for uh, easy trade uh, across the oceans. Cultural Exchange Program between Ministry of Culture, GOI, Ministry of Culture of Denmark for the years 2022 to 2026. With India increasing its uh, connections to Denmark, uh, it's good that uh, there is now going to be more cultural exchanges. It'll help increase the knowledge that both countries have of each other and understandings that they have. The letter of intent between Ministry of Jal Shakti and Ministry of Environment of Denmark. This is really good because this will really help India because India has several uh, issues related to water jal shakti is about water conservation and denmark leads in environmental policy across the world so this will really help india and i'm sure that companies and working for denmark that will be involved in water conservation in india under this agreement will make money so it will benefit them as well the MOU on cooperation in the field of skill development, vocational education, and entrepreneurship. This is good because both countries have vibrant uh, professional populations and communities, and they'll be able to uh, improve their career prospects and skills by working on these. Joint Declaration of Intent on cooperation in the fields of animal husbandry and dairy. Uh, this is good because this will help India modernize its animal husbandry and dairy industry, which is modern, it's not backwards, but it's still, uh, there's still lots of work needs to be done to make it efficient, clean, and hygienic, and Denmark can help in that. Letter of intent and between Invest India and Technical University of Denmark to facilitate startup collaboration. This is really good because it will allow businesses between both countries, uh, new businesses, startups, to collaborate with each other and grow together. And between India and Germany, yeah, India signed agreements on triangular <laughs> development cooperation and renewable energy partnership. They also signed an agreement on a direct encrypted connection between two foreign offices. I really uh, think that these agreements are good because triangular development cooperation will uh, help them allow both countries to uh, work in foreign third party countries. And the new energy partnership is good because it'll 
involve Germany giving uh, India financial resources, finances, uh, and to uh, move into a renewable energy so program, which is good for India's environment and its economy. And the direct encrypted connection between the two foreign offices is good so that they can easily communicate with each other. And yeah, so these between India and Germany, there weren't many agreements as many as were there were with Denmark, but there was a lot of conversations. Like there was intergovernmental consultations, which is a unique biennial dialogue mechanism of allowing governments to coordinate on wide spectrum of bilateral matters. And France and India, in their meeting, uh, they talked about how they have a strong military relationship with six Scor French Scorpion submarines built at MDL in Mumbai, along with the sort of technology. This is in line with India's Make in India initiative and uh, taking forward this momentum. They, France will involve itself in the Atman and Badat program to advance defense technology, manufacturing, and exports, including through encouraging increased industry to industry partnerships. India, and they also agreed to work together in technical and scientific space cooperation. India and France agreed to set up a bilateral strategic dialogue on space issues to bring together experts from space and defense agencies, administration, a specialized ecosystem to discuss security and economic challenges in outer space, the norms and principles applicable to space, as well as unveil new areas of cooperation. This is all really, really good. India has a strong space organization called ISRO, which is uh, planning on uh, starting its first human mich mission. Uh, in next in some in the near future and uh, and is also planning on uh, sending uh, more satellites and other probes into space and eventually uh, becoming a major uh, it's already a major player but even a bigger player on the global level in space France can help which is all because France works with the European Space Agency. So France can really help India and India can help France by launching satellites for it and sharing uh, data and research. So, and so that will help. India and France have strengthened cooperation between their cybersecurity agencies. This is good, especially as they say in the digitized world. They agreed to join forces in promoting cyber norms and principles in order to counter cyber threats and agree to upgrade their bilateral cyber dialogue with a view to contributing to a peaceful, secure, and open cyberspace. This is great. Like, this will help prevent uh, cyber crime, cyber uh, terrorism, and yeah. The two sides launched a number of initiatives to connect their startup ecosystems and welcome recent public private engagement to work together based on their respective success. This is just great. So, um, so that's great. All those agreements shows how India's partnerships with both of the, all three of these countries are growing and getting stronger. And about the Ukraine situation, India simply said that it wants peace, but did not side with either Russia or Ukraine in the matter. And this was good enough for these European countries. They didn't press India to condemn Russia in the joint statements. There's no condemnation of Russia. So that's good. They understand us and we understand them. And they each of these uh, countries have agreed with India that the Indo-Pacific must remain open for uh, navigation of ships and that there should not be uh, territorial uh, aggression against any of the countries in the Indo-Pacific. This is a reference to China, so 
shows they're on the same page with, with China and that this difference between India and uh, Europe with regards to Russia does not affect their unity against Chinese aggression in the Indo Pacific. So I think the media's focus on Ukraine during these visits was inappropriate. They should have focused more on the agreements because that's what actually will propel the relationships. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the video. I just want to end this as usual by wishing good luck to India. So that was the video. If you want to see other videos related to India and current events, click on this playlist. If you want to see my previous video, click on this video. If you want to see the sources I used for this video, click the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Bande Mataram.